Hi, welcome to the Sun Yat-sen Nanyang Memorial Hall. Built in 1902, the Memorial Hall was formerly a privately owned villa known as Wan Qingyuan. The name Wan Qingyuan, or Serene Sunset Garden, originated from a poem by Tang Dynasty poet Li Xiangyin. Balestia Den was a rural suburb and many rich individuals chose to set up country bungalows here to escape from the overcrowded town centre. The quiet location of the villa in the early 20th century was one of the reasons why Dr. Sun chose it as a revolutionary base when he was in Southeast Asia. After the Tongwen Hui, also known as Chinese Revolutionary Alliance, was established in Singapore in late 1905, Dr. Sun plotted three uprisings at this villa and eventually made Singapore the Southeast Asian headquarters of the Tongwen Hui. The four permanent galleries highlight the lesser-known story of how the overseas Chinese in Singapore and the region contributed greatly to the founding of the Chinese Republic. The galleries also examine the lasting impact of the 1911 revolution on the Chinese in Southeast Asia and highlight the invaluable contributions of the Chinese business community to nation-building in Singapore. In Gallery 1, we introduce three earlier supporters of Dr. Sun Yat-sen in Singapore, Tio Ing Hock, Lim Nee Soon and Tan Cho Lam, and the story of how they came to be acquainted with Dr. Sun. They later joined Dr. Sun's revolutionary movement that led to the birth of modern China. One of the most important figures in the formation of Tong Men Hui Singapore branch was Singapore-born Teochew merchant Tio Ing Hock. He was the son of Tio Li and Tan Po Nyo, the daughter of a Kapitan China in Muntok, Indonesia. Tio Ing Hock purchased this villa in 1905 with his brother, Tio Ba Tan, in hopes that their mother could enjoy her sunset years here. His family ran a textile shop named Chop Sin Tiang Bi at Beach Road. Tio Ing Hock later became the first deputy chairman of the Tong Men Hui Singapore branch. This is a memoir published by Tio Ing Hock in 1933. Titled Nanyang and the Founding of the Republic, this memoir is an important first-hand account on Dr. Sun Yat-sen's revolutionary activities in Southeast Asia and the Chinese community's role in the revolution. Another founding member of the Tong Men Hui Singapore branch was Tio Ing Hock's nephew, Lim Nee Soon. Also born in Singapore, Lim Nee Soon was often at a young age and was brought up by his maternal grandmother, Tan Po Nyo. Lim Nee Soon was influenced by his uncle's political activism and became a fervent supporter of the revolution. Many Singaporeans are probably familiar with Yishun Town in the northern part of Singapore. But did you know the town was named after Lim Nee Soon? Lim played a pivotal role in opening up northern Singapore, including Sembawang, Masling and Yishun for settlement. And Yishun, which is the Hainping pronunciation of Nee Soon, was named after him to commemorate his contributions. Tan Cho Lam was a neighbour of Tio Ing Hock. And like Tio, Tan Cho Lam's family also ran their timber business from a shop on Beach Road. Tan Cho Lam later became the inaugural provisional chairman of the Tong Men Hui Singapore branch. His real name was Tan Lian Chai, but he adopted the alias Tan Cho Lam for his revolutionary activities. Tan Cho Lam started writing newspaper commentaries condemning the corrupt Qing government at the young age of 20. After the establishment of the Tong Men Hui Singapore branch, Tan Cho Lam helped Dr. Sun Yat-sen set up more branches and organisations such as reading clubs all over the Nanyang region to spread revolutionary ideals. He and Tio Ing Hock not only shouldered Dr. Sun's expenses during his stopovers in Singapore, but also helped displaced revolutionaries from China settle down in Singapore. Tio Ing Hock, Tan Cho Lam and Lim Nee Soon were initially supporters of the reformist movement spearheaded by Kang Yo Wei in China. The reformist movement advocated a constitutional monarchy for China like Meiji Japan. The three gentlemen were acquainted with Ku Siok Wan, a prominent supporter of the reformist movement in Singapore. Who introduced them to pro-reformist books and newspapers such as Qing Yi Bao, Xin Ming Chong Bao and Kai Zhi Lu. These publications inspired the trio to be more politically involved with the happenings in China. However, the failure of the Hundred Days Reform Movement made it apparent that the Empress Dowager was only giving lip service to reforms. Tu Ing Hock and Tan Cho Lam reckoned that more radical actions needed to be taken and set up their own pro-revolutionary newspaper, Tu Ram Jipo, in 1904. The newspaper published articles criticising the Qing government and demanded an end to Manchu rule. This calendar, printed in 1905, was instrumental in connecting the trio to Dr. Sun Yat-sen. Toram Dipon only had around 30 subscribers as most people did not dare to read such anti-Qing papers, fearing that they might be identified as traitors or rebels. Tio personally designed his calendar to be distributed free so as to entice people to read the newspaper. The calendar features the Liberty Bell and the flag of independence in the centre. 
there is a revolutionary slogan at the top that reads, How can we bear to let others trample on the glorious culture of our country? I call on our heroes to take back our land. Dr. Sun Yat-sen, who was then in Honolulu, was overjoyed when he chanced upon this calendar, which called for revolution against the Qing dynasty. Dr. Sun subsequently contacted his friend Yao Lit, who was then in Singapore, to request for a meeting with Tio and Tan. When Sun Yat-sen was travelling from Europe to Japan in 1905, he planned a brief stop in Singapore and arranged for a meeting with Tio Ng Kok, Tan Chao Lam and Lim Nee Soon on board the ship. Dr. Sun was impressed by their enthusiasm for revolution and shared that he had considerable support from the Chinese students in Europe. He was on the way to Tokyo to form a revolutionary alliance and organisation. Dr. Sun urged Tio and Tan to get ready to join this alliance and promised Tan that he would personally come to Singapore to enlist the support of local revolutionaries after the organisation was set up in Japan. This calligraphy is one of the key highlights in Gallery 1. Dr. Sun Yat-sen presented this Chinese calligraphy to Tio Bing Wan, the elder son of Tio Ing Hock's brother, Tio Ba Tan. This gesture demonstrated Dr. Sun's close ties to the Tio family. In his description of the concept of nationalism, Dr. Sun emphasised that to him, Wo Ai, or universal love, was a desire to save the world, the people and the country.